Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about catabolite repression or positive control of lacoperon. In the last video we saw the negative control of lacoperon where we saw what happens naturally where there is no lactose. Uh, there will be a repressor protein bound to operator so that it blocks the way for po uh, RNA polymerase and it cannot transcribe the gene. Only when there is lactose present in the environment and glucose absent in the environment, the allolactose molecule will bind to this repressor. There will be a conformational change, there will be shape change and it will be removed from the operator and the RNA polymerase can transcribe the genes. Now this is a scenario where there is no glucose present and only lactose is present. If in the environment there is also glucose present, you know, there is glucose and lactose both are present. What a cell should do? The smart thing for a cell to do will be first utilize the glucose completely because that's the simplest source that is available, right? It need not go and waste energy behind lactose and break it down to lac glucose and galactose and then utilize it. Already glucose is present, so it should first utilize the glucose. Only when there is, you know, depletion in glucose, it should go ahead and start breaking down lactose. So the first thing that a cell would utilize is glucose and the next is lactose. So how this control happens, even though there is lactose in the medium, it will go and bind to the repressor, it will remove the repressor, right? And the polymerase would transcribe the, these genes. So how is it possible that in the presence of lactose and glucose, the operon is control and that is called the positive control. Now, why is it called the catabolite repression or positive control? These two terms will be clear towards the end of a video. For that, we need to understand the whole concept. Okay, and I'm going to introduce some new terms over here. Easy to understand, just follow me. Uh, it's all going to make sense, you know, it's all, everything will come together at one point. So, let's begin and try and understand what is this catabolite repression. So if you guys remember, this is our lac operon, right? We had seen three structural genes, operator, promoter, there was an inhibitor gene, promoter for the inhibitor gene. What we did not see in the last video is the uh, activator protein binding site. Now, if you know the concept of activator protein, certain promoters, they need the presence of activator protein and since it's a protein you will assume that there has to be an activator protein binding site right so let's let's take for example this is the activator binding site and that is generally very close to the promoter the activator protein will bind to the activator uh, protein binding site on DNA and what is the function of this activator protein? As the name itself suggests, it's activated or it's, you know, it enhances the process of transcription. Now, in the absence of this activator protein, also there will be transcription if there is, you know, nothing on the way for uh, RNA polymerase, but the transcription levels are going to be really low. Activator proteins are going to increase the affinity of RNA polymerase for the promoter so that it can firmly bind to the promoter and it's going to enhance the level of transcription. A lot of transcription would occur. So we need to understand this one point that activator proteins is going to uh, increase the affinity of RNA polymerase to its promoter so that it can bind firmly and it is going to enhance the level of transcription greatly. It will result in lots and lots of production of mRNA and enzyme. In the absence of activator protein, RNA polymerase would bind to its promoter and if there is nothing on the way, it will transcribe the genes, but the level of transcription is going to be very, very low. This is the first key point that we need to, we need to understand. So in the lac operon, there is a binding site for activator. One new point that we need to add over here, that is before our lac promoter. Now the activator protein that is involved in the lac operon is called the CAP protein. CAP stands for catabolite activator protein. It is also known as CRP that is cyclic AMP receptor protein. So what is the function of this particular activator protein? This CAP is actually a sensor for glucose. 
okay because we are talking about a condition where glucose and lactose is present so we need some sensing um, mechanism that can sense if glucose is also present in the environment lactose presence we would know because allolactose will bind to repressor that has been taken care of but how would we know if there is also glucose present in the environment so for that we have the cap the activator protein that acts like the sensor for glucose cap if it is present in the cell it cannot directly go and bind to this particular cap side what it needs is the activation it's a sensor for glucose right and it needs to sense if glucose is present and that is possible with the help of the cyclic amp now you might know that cyclic amp is a great uh, secondary messenger right it's a great messenger molecule that gives signal okay so here cyclic amp is going to give signal to cap whether glucose is present in the environment or not whether glucose is high in the environment or low so what happens is cap directly is not a sensor of glucose but it needs help of cyclic amp now so what happens is the level of glucose in the environment would be sensed by checking the level of cyclic amp in the cell and how that works is uh, you know cyclic amp is produced from atp i think we all know this by adenyl cyclase enzyme okay and glucose has effect on this enzyme if glucose is present in the environment it actually blocks this adenyl cyclase enzyme so if glucose is present in the environment it inhibits this enzyme if the enzyme is inhibited there is no cyclic amp produced so the level of cyclic amp reduces right what i'm trying to say is if there is a glucose in the medium if there is high level of glucose in the medium it would affect the adenyl cyclase as a result it will reduces the cyclic amp level in the cell on the other hand if there is very low glucose or if there is no glucose adenyl cyclase will go ahead and pr and produce cyclic amp from atp so you will have high level of cyclic amp in the cell it is inversely proportional the level of glucose and cyclic amp okay understand this if glucose is high cyclic amp is low and if glucose is low cyclic amp is high and how cyclic amp helps us because it's a sensor molecule you will also read somewhere is a um, hunger molecule cyclic amp is a hunger molecule because it can tell you whether glucose is present or not because because glucose can affect the production of cyclic amp so if there is a good amount of cyclic amp present in the environment it can bind to activator protein cap and it can be activated once cyclic amp binds to cap that particular complex cyclic amp plus cap that can go and bind to this cap binding site okay remember cap can be activated only when it is bound to cyclic amp cyclic amp can be bound to this only when there is no glucose in the medium that's when the cyclic amp will be produced right only in that condition so cyclic amp if it is present in the environment it will go and bind to cap and and this particular complex will bind to cap binding site now as i said it's an activator protein if this complex bind over here it is going to enhance the affinity of rna polymerase 2 promoter and it is going to you know increase the level of transcription lots and lots of mrnas will be produced lots and lots of enzyme will be made right this is as simple as that now this point one point is actually applied to the negative control where we saw there is no glucose if there is no glucose cyclic amp will be high and if cyclic amp is high it will go and bind to cap and that complex will bind at the cap binding site that would enhance the transcription of structural gene lots and lots of enzyme will be produced and lactose will be utilized so this is what happens when there is no glucose in the environment and only lactose is present in the negative control what we saw is the operator is bound by the repressor protein which will be removed by allolactose because lactose is present so repressor protein will be removed 
now there is you know nothing in between so promoter can actually pass through this region but there is no glucose in the medium that means the cyclic amp levels are really high in the cell that would bind to the uh, catabolite activator protein and that complex will bind to cap binding site this both things together removal of repressor and binding of activator protein is going to enhance the transcription of structural gene what we saw in the last video was only you know removal of repressor we did not talk about this particular point but understand this is also occurring simultaneously in this scenario all right so cyclic amp and cap complex is very important to uh, you know increase the affinity of rna polymerase to the promoter and increase the transcription level if the cyclic amp and cap is not there it is going to decrease the affinity of rna polymerase to its promoter and transcription level is very very low now based on this particular concept if you have understood this much let's uh, look at different scenarios that could be there you know uh if in an environment where there is no glucose and no lactose present how the lac operon will act so this is our lac operon there is no glucose look at this so so if you say there is no glucose that means adenyl cyclase is going to produce cyclic amp so in this case cyclic amp is high if cyclic amp is high it is going to bind to cap protein and this complex will bind to cap binding site so this is going to happen but there is no lactose in the medium if there is no lactose in the medium there will be no allolactose to bind with the repressor as a result repressor cannot be removed so even though this particular complex is bound it is going to give high affinity for the rna polymerase you know giving signal come and bind but there is repressor bound as a result it cannot transcribe the gene so lac genes are not expressed okay so in a condition where there is no glucose no lactose lac genes are not expressed easy enough now if there is a condition where there is no uh, glucose but there is only lactose in that case what happens now this is our uh, negative control this is the example of negative lac operon that we saw in the last video if there is no glucose again there will be high cyclic amp which will bind to cap protein activate the cap protein and this complex will sit at the cap binding site okay so this is done what happens to the lactose if lactose is present there will be allolactose which will go and bind to a repressor and remove the repressor now there are two things happening repressor is removed and cap is also bound at the uh, activator site so now binding of this complex is giving signal to rna polymerase to come and bind to promoter with high affinity and go and transcribe the genes at really high level so lac genes are strongly expressed and this is what happens in the negative control or the inducible lac operon that we had seen now if there is a situation where there is only glucose present and there is no lactose present what happens glucose is high so that means there is low level of cyclic amp if it is low it will not bind to cap so there is no binding of the cyclic amp and cap over here nothing also there is no lactose so there will be no allolactose to remove the repressor simple enough to understand lac genes are not expressed nothing is happening and it's this is what a cell wants now here is a tricky situation where there is glucose and lactose both present in the environment and that is what we are talking about today the positive control of lac operon if cell has choice of both the sugar what happens there is a high amount of glucose that means there is low amount of cyclic amp if there is low amount or there is maybe no amount of cyclic amp it cannot bind with cap there is no cap uh, cyclic amp complex formation so nothing is bound at cap binding site activator protein is not bound second point is there is lactose present in the environment if there is lactose present allolactose will be made and it will go and bind to repressor and remove the repressor so rna polymerase is actually going to transcribe these genes even though there is glucose present but the important point that we need to understand over here is there is no cyclic amp and cap formation so there is no activator protein over here 
so the affinity of rna polymerase the ability of rna polymerase to transcribe these genes is very very low so even though there is uh, glucose present it is not that the lac operon will be completely shut off it's that is why it is called sometimes the leaky operon okay it is going to transcribe these genes because lactose is present right allolactose will go and remove the repressor but because there is no activator protein it is going to reduce the transcription level very very low maybe basal level of gene transcription will be there if i want to show you in a graph this is how it will look like so if you look at the beta galactosidase level uh, in the presence and absence of glucose what happens is this is the condition where there is a no lactose present in the medium when you add lactose and there is no glucose definitely the lac operon is going to get induced so lot and lot of uh, beta galactosidase will be made why because there is no glucose if there is no glucose you remember cyclic amp levels will be high and it will bind with the activator protein activate it go and bind to the activator site and increase the level of transcription to a very high rate so there will be a lot of genes uh, i mean lot of molecules of beta galactosidase will be made now in a cell if you keep glucose and lactose both what happens is there is glucose so low amount of cyclic amp will be there so there will be no cyclic amp cap formation uh, will be made but there is lactose right so it will go and remove the repressor so you see there is gene transcription but because there is no cyclic amp cap formation the gene transcription rate is very very low okay it is not as much as it is in the uh, normal negative lac operon so in case of positive control or a catabolite repression of lac operon where there is glucose lactose both present the transcription level of uh, your lac genes is very very low and why it is called catabolite repression is because because here the uh, catabolic breakdown product of glucose is preventing the uh, activation of lac operon right if there is glucose it is going to prevent the activation of lac operon in that sense prevention is there so repression catabolite of glucose so it is called catabolite repression now why is it called positive control as i said there is something that enhances the process of transcription it is positive in case of negative if you remember it was the repressor protein that was blocking the uh, transcription so it was called negative control in case of positive control there is this activator protein cap that we talked about it enhances the process of transcription in that sense it is called positive control because it is you know enhancing the activator protein is enhancing the process of transcription if it is present so that's all for now i hope this was easy to understand do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i will see you next time until then keep learning